Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic that often sparks curiosity and sometimes even debate. Why aren't the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar using the metric system like the rest of the world? It's a question that many have asked, and the answer is rooted in a complex mix of history, culture, and politics. Let's unravel this intriguing story. To understand why these three countries haven't fully adopted the metric system, we need to travel back in time to the origins of measurement systems. Historically, societies developed their own systems based on everyday needs. For instance, ancient Egyptians used a system based on body parts like the cubit, while the Romans had their own units such as the foot and the mile. These early systems were practical but varied widely between regions and cultures, making trade and communication challenging. The story of the metric system begins in 18th century France during the French Revolution. The revolutionaries sought to standardize measurements to promote fairness and efficiency. In 1795, they introduced the metric system, a decimal-based system rooted in natural constants, specifically the dimensions of the Earth. This system, with its meters, liters, and grams, was designed to be simple, universal, and easy to use. It gradually spread across Europe and beyond, becoming the international standard. By the late 19th and early 20th centuries, many countries had adopted the metric system, recognizing its advantages in trade, science, and industry. However, the United States, Liberia, and Myanmar took different paths. Let's explore each country's unique journey. The United States, a young nation in the late 18th century initially showed interest in the metric system. Thomas Jefferson, an advocate of rational measures, proposed a decimal-based system, but it didn't gain traction. The U.S. had already established its own customary units derived from British imperial measures, which were deeply ingrained in daily life and commerce. As the nation grew, so did the complexity of changing these entrenched systems. By the time the metric system gained global momentum, the U.S. was an industrial powerhouse with extensive infrastructure built around the customary system. Converting to metric would have been costly and disruptive. Moreover, there was a sense of American exceptionalism, a belief in the uniqueness of American culture and systems. This cultural identity played a significant role in resisting metrication. Education also played a part. While metric units are taught in American schools, customary units remain dominant in everyday life. This dual system creates a familiarity with both, but a preference for customary units persists. Attempts to promote metrication, such as the Metric Conversion Act of 1975, faced public indifference and political pushback. Today, the U.S. uses a hybrid approach, with industries like science and medicine using metric, while daily life relies on customary units. Liberia's story is closely tied to the United States. Founded by freed American slaves in the 19th century, Liberia adopted many aspects of American culture, including its measurement system. The country's economic and cultural ties to the U.S. reinforced the use of customary units. Despite global metrication trends, Liberia has maintained this system, influenced by its historical relationship with America. Like the U.S., Liberia faces challenges in transitioning to the metric system. Economic constraints, limited infrastructure, and the need for widespread education on metric units are significant hurdles. While there have been discussions about adopting the metric system, the country continues to use customary units for most practical purposes. Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, presents a different case. Under British colonial rule, Myanmar adopted the imperial system. However, after gaining independence in 1948, the country did not immediately switch to the metric system. Political instability, economic isolation, and military rule hindered such a transition. Unlike Liberia and the U.S., Myanmar has made steps toward metrication in recent years. 
the government announced plans to adopt the metric system in the 2010, recognizing its benefits for international trade and economic development. However, the transition is ongoing and complex, requiring significant changes in education, industry, and daily life. The reluctance to fully adopt the metric system in these three countries is influenced by a mix of historical, cultural, and practical factors. In the U.S., deeply rooted customary units and a sense of national identity play a significant role. Liberia's adoption of American customs, including measurements, reflects its unique history. Myanmar's transition is complicated by its colonial past and recent political changes. While the metric system offers clear advantages in standardization and simplicity, changing established systems is no small feat. It involves extensive education, changes in manufacturing, and shifts in public perception. For these countries, the costs and challenges of transitioning must be weighed against the benefits. Education plays a crucial role in this process. Teaching younger generations about the metric system can pave the way for a gradual transition. In the U.S., metric education has improved, but widespread adoption remains a challenge due to the persistence of customary units in everyday life. So, why aren't the U.S., Liberia, and Myanmar using the metric system like the rest of the world? The answer lies in a complex interplay of history, culture, and practicality. Each country's unique journey reflects its historical ties, cultural identity, and the challenges of changing deeply ingrained systems. As we move forward, it's possible that global pressures and the need for standardization will drive further metrication efforts. But for now, these countries continue to navigate their own paths, balancing tradition with modernity. Thanks for joining us on this exploration. Until next time, stay curious. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.